Hi, welcome to my first video on this channel. My name is Zergis and I'm studying as a software engineer right now. I finally gathered my thoughts and decided to start a YouTube channel. I still haven't decided what I want to do here, so I assume this channel will have mixed topic videos. Today I want to tell you about the process of compilation, transpilation and interpretation of programming languages using a simple esoteric language called BrainFuck as an example. Let's start from some theory and figure out what we need to do to execute a program written in BrainFuck or basically in any other programming language. First of all, we need to understand how BrainFuck works. Each BrainFuck program has a set of memory cells, usually 30,000 of them. All of these values are initialized with zeros. The memory is just an array of bytes and we can use it to store some data. To modify the data stored in the memory, we have a set of operations. We can select the next memory cell, select the previous memory cell, increase the value in the current cell and decrease the value in the current cell, output the value of the current cell and input the value to the current cell. Besides, we can also wrap some pieces of code into loops. To wrap a piece of code in a loop, we need to use left and right square brackets. Loops can be nested infinitely. If the current cell value equals to zero, the loop is considered to be ended. Otherwise, we need to repeat the iteration. To encode these operations, we need to use special symbols. These symbols build up a set of terminals or tokens. In formal languages theory, there are two things – terminals and non-terminals. Non-terminals build up chains of other non-terminals and terminals, while terminals don't. For example, let's come up with a simple rule. In this case, S is a non-terminal, while A, B and C are terminals. S is a starting non-terminal. It can produce chains of terminals and non-terminals. So, if we take S and then try to apply some rules, we will get A, B and C as an output. We can make it more complex. Now we have two non-terminals, S and capital C. As before, A, B and small c are terminals. Now, like in the previous example, we need to take S as the first non-terminal. Then we apply the first rule and we get A, B and capital C. But C, as I said earlier, is a non-terminal, which means there are still rules to apply. This time we apply the second rule and we get A, B and small c again. Now we can build a grammar for BrainFuck. First let's define a set of terminals for our language. Now let's define a grammar itself. Since the language is pretty easy, there won't be any complex rules. The epsilon symbol means an empty terminal. It's like an empty character. When we use it, we add nothing to the chain. Let's break up some of the rules because it may not make sense at a first glance. I want to explain in particular why every rule has a null terminal S in the end of each rule and how the loop rule works. Let's start from the first rule since every other one is practically the same, only the leftmost terminal is different. So, what does the first rule mean? It means that every terminal can be basically followed by any other terminal or non-terminal. Let's write a simple program in BrainFuck. Now we can build a sequence of chains using our rules. First we, as usual, take our starting non-terminal S. Then, according to our program, we apply the third rule because the program starts with a plus sign. Then we see that the next token is minus. We need to apply rule number 4 this time. Do you see now? We always add up one symbol to the right part of the chain. That's why we needed this S in the end of each rule. Let's unwrap the whole sequence. The last non-terminal was converted into an empty terminal epsilon. That's its only purpose. So, as you can see, we always replace the leftmost on terminal in the chain using a specific rule. Now that we've finished building the grammar, we can finally design a tokenizer and a parser. But what are these things? 
Well, it's pretty easy. Tokenizer is a program that splits text into tokens or terminals we've talked about earlier. We've already defined a set of tokens before in this video. Let's have a quick look at it again. Tokenizer would split the input string into these tokens so we could work with them separately. But what about parsing? Remember what we did with our simple program when we applied different rules to the input terminal chain? That's what basically parsers do. They are going through a sequence of tokens and trying to determine what rules were applied. But there are still some things we haven't talked about. I explained only the two steps of what we can do with the input character sequence, but what's next? There are at least three ways to process the information we get from the parser, and they are compilation, interpretation, and transpilation. Compilation converts the source code into actual instructions that a CPU can execute, or a bytecode that a special virtual machine understands, and only then convert these instructions into machine code. I won't cover processes like linking here, so let's assume our program is compiled directly into a ready-to-run sequence of instructions. These types of compilation are called ahead-of-time compilation, also known as AOT compilation, and just-in-time compilation, also known as JIT compilation. In this video, we will write an AOT compiler that will convert BrainFuck into a custom set of binary instructions that we will design a bit later, and then we will write a program that will imitate a CPU that will execute these instructions. But as I said before, there were three ways to execute a program. What about the last two of them? Well, it's not complex at all. While compilation converts source code into machine code or bytecode, interpreters are running programs on the fly. They tokenize, parse, and execute instructions immediately without storing the bytecode or machine code in some files. Transpilation is even easier. Transpilers just convert one set of instructions into another. The best example of a transpiled language is TypeScript, because it's being converted into JavaScript. In this video, we will also write a transpiler and an interpreter of BrainFuck. I will skip writing an interpreter and the transpiler in this video, because it's pretty straightforward. I'll leave a link to the GitHub repository in the description under this video. But I want to cover compilation. Earlier in this video I said that I was going to implement an AOT compiler and then other program that will imitate a CPU and will execute the instructions. But first of all we need to design these instructions. Let's have a quick look at what we can do in BrainPack again. We can select the next memory cell, select the previous memory cell, increase the value in the current cell and decrease the value in the current cell, output the value of the current cell and input the value to the current cell. Let's encode selection operation with three bytes. The first byte will encode the operation type, the second byte will encode the sign, and the last byte will encode how far we need to move the pointer. Same logic will apply to the increment and decrement operations. The input and output operation will be encoded with just one byte. It seems like we're done with designing the instructions, but we forgot one thing – loops. We need to encode the looping operation somehow. I decided to follow the assembly way. First, let's assume that every instruction has an index that will start from zero. There also will be an instruction pointer that will store an index of the current instruction. Then we need to introduce a special instruction that we will call go to if. It will be encoded with five bytes. The first byte will encode the operation type, and the last four bytes will store an instruction index. If the current value is not zero, it will move the instruction pointer to the instruction index stored in goToIf operation. Otherwise, the instruction pointer will be moved to the next instruction. Besides, we also need to implement a simple goTo instruction. To avoid double checks and loops, let's put go to if operation in the beginning and initialize the instruction pointer bytes with zeros. Then, let's process instructions inside of the loop. M is the address of the last instruction in the loop. 
After processing all of them, let's put a go to operation in the end that will point to go to if operation. M plus K is the address of the go to instruction that comes right after the last instruction in the loop. And then we will record the address of the operation that will go after the go to operation and write it to the address of the go to if operation. All the instructions after go to start from the m plus k plus 5 address, because go to instruction takes 5 bytes in memory. And finally, let's introduce the last instruction, return. It will mark the end of the program. Let's have a look at all the instructions we've designed so far. Now we can finally implement a compiler that will compile source code into binary instructions. You can find all the code in the description. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.